Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Tin Man Score channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tin Man Taylor, and today I'll be reacting to another Chilling Scares video for you guys. And it's three disturbing true Halloween horror stories. So, without further ado, I'm going to turn the lights back off, move the camera up here for you guys, and let's get the show on the road and in the bag. And judged by the title, I know it's going to be scary. <laughs> I should have wore a mask for that part, but anyway, <laughs> I forgot. Alrighty, here we go. happened a few years back on Halloween night. One of my friends and I had plans to go around the neighborhood and do the usual trick-or-treating kids our age would do. We were both 12 at the time, so not old enough for it to be weird to still go trick-or-treating, right. but old enough to be able to go without our parents. I remember being pretty excited for this reason alone. It would be the first year we would be able to go trick-or-treating with just ourselves, and this gave us the opportunity to choose our own route that had all the good houses. Well, to be honest with you, uh, I would go trick-or-treating again, but I'm just too old for that now. Now, I could get into a Halloween costume, but I'm not going trick-or-treating. I just let all the little kids do that. But that sure does bring back memories when you just said trick-or-treating at 12 years old. Real quick, I, I think I trick-or-treated from, you know, when I was a toddler, of course, to... I would say probably up to 17. The night was going like any other Halloween night. We got our bags like halfway full when it started getting late. I want to say it was around 9 p.m. by that point. Around the time people started turning off their house lights to signify they would no longer be answering the door. My friend suggested we start heading back, but I was stubborn and wanted to take advantage of every last house we could. We ended up agreeing to visit one last cul-de-sac before going back home. Now, we live in a nice neighborhood, but for whatever reason, there was a huge lack of streetlights. And considering a lot of the houses now had their lights off, it was getting more and more difficult to see. As we continued our walk, seemingly out of nowhere, we both noticed the silhouette of a man walking towards us. Not like other trick-or-treaters, but rather some lone, full-grown man. As we got closer, we realized it was a police officer, and as we walked past him, he introduced himself. Shortly after, he pointed to a house further down the road and explained how there was an older man living there who had been attempting to lure trick-or-treaters inside. He further explained that someone called it into the police, and that's why he was there in the first place. Throughout the short conversation, he would continually explain how his police car was just over there. Like, that's actually what he said, just over there and pointed in some random direction. Even at age 12, the whole encounter felt extremely unnatural. But what the officer said next caught both of us completely off guard. He said he needed to talk to the man, but that because he was a police officer, the man wouldn't open the door for him. Though he said if we knocked on the door, the man probably would open it. And after the man attempted to lure us inside, the officer said he would jump out of the bushes and catch the man in the act. My friend and I just looked at each other. We were both speechless. To better put this into perspective, you need to understand just how outlandish this request was. Yeah, it sounds outlandish. Uh, you either had to pay me a large sum of money in order to do that or be more like an informant type person. This supposed law enforcement officer was requesting two 12-year-old kids intentionally walk up to the house of a man reported to have been luring kids inside. He was essentially asking children he had just met to act as bait. Neither of us responded for a while. Eventually... The officer broke the silence with something along the lines of how we needed to do this quick. By this point, we hadn't even agreed yet. I wanted to speak up and say no, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Just then, a large group of teenagers came around a bend in the street. They were heading in our direction. That's when the officer said he'd be right back, and not to go anywhere. He went off in some random direction. As the group of teenagers passed us, one of them asked us if we knew that guy. We said we didn't, and briefly explained what had just happened. Obviously concerned, the group agreed the situation was weird, and offered to walk us back home. We took them up on the offer, 
and that was pretty much that. My friend and I wouldn't really tell anyone about our experience. But over the years, I've started to regret not making a bigger deal about it and reporting the situation to the police. We still don't know whether that was a real cop or not. But the older I get, the more I think it wasn't. And I mean, even if it was, putting two 12-year-olds in such a potentially dangerous situation is not acceptable as an officer of law enforcement. No. Or as anyone for that matter. Police officer or not, I don't know what the guy's true motives were. And that thought still haunts me. Yeah, no, uh, something was fishy about that guy. And he's posing as an officer. So, uh... I wouldn't have done what he said anyway, and then I'm glad those teenagers uh, showed up and made him run away, basically. But, yeah, I would have still told my parents, and they would have told the cops that and be, like, trying to find this guy. Because if he was a real officer, he wouldn't put no kids in real danger of a child predator trying to lure in kids in the house with candy. It was Halloween night of 2016. I was 23 at the time, and lived in my own two-story house. Now, Halloween in 2016 was a lot different to anything I'd seen before. There were a few months back then where anything anyone could talk about were these killer clown sightings and things of that nature. And, of course, that year Halloween took place right when the talk of killer clowns was at its peak. Oh, crud. I remember a lot of parents not allowing their kids to do any trick-or-treating that year because of it. I myself... I was about to say something about that because he just said the year 2016 and... All them killer clown stuff started happening around that time. Jeez. No, I didn't really have anything planned. I was going to hang out with a couple friends while handing out candy to the kids that came by, but that was pretty much it. Eventually, further into the night, when the doorbell rings started to slow down, the three of us, which was me and my two friends, who I'll call Thomas and Kenny for the sake of this story, started talking about general scary Halloween stuff. At one point, Thomas brought up a haunted house down the street. He explained that we should go, and see how scary it was. Now, I figured I was to the point where I was too old for all that kind of stuff. But Thomas said it was the real deal. I know that's scary, but not scary enough to keep the kids away type of haunted house. Rather, this thing was legit. Or, at least that's what he said. So, we all agreed to try it out. It was about a five minute walk to get there. I didn't say this out loud, but when we did get there, it didn't look like all that Thomas had made it out to be. Honestly, it looked like some teenagers had set it up in only a few hours. We walked inside, and I quickly realized the place was decently packed. There were a lot of other people walking through. The whole thing wasn't that scary. I got jump scared a couple of times, but that was about the extent of it. Though, that was until I saw these three clowns. I have to admit, the costumes were really good. You could tell they spent a lot of time on them. What was weird, though, was how after they scared us, they continued through the house following us. All of the other people dressed up would just scare us once and wait for the next people to walk through. But these guys literally followed us until we got back outside. This put me... They're not haunt actors. They're probably real uh, dangerous people in clown costumes. This put me on edge, but I didn't say anything. We all walked back to my house, and shortly after, Thompson and Kenny would leave. Maybe 30 minutes after they left, my doorbell went off. Obviously, it wasn't uncommon to get late-night trick-or-treaters, but by this point, it was around midnight. There was no way this was some kid looking for candy, so I ignored it. But just to hear footsteps walking around my backyard a minute later, I was now just annoyed. In my mind, I was almost positive it was just some teenagers trying to mess with me. No. I flickered my back porch light on and off multiple Dang. times as a way to scare them away. I looked out the window to see if it worked. And that's when I saw three men in clown costumes running into the darkness. My mind instantly jumped to earlier that night at the haunted house. But how could they have figured out where I lived? Unless, well, unless they followed me back home. I mean, I was upstairs and texted a group chat with me, Thomas, and Kenny saying, Yeah, uh, that's the only thing I could come up with is unless they were like spying on you when you enter your house so they know where you lived at. Guys, I think those three clowns from the haunted house were just in my backyard. Kenny would send a text back saying, Dude, call the cops. I figured that wasn't a bad idea. Yeah. At the very least, the cops come here and I file a report for trespassing. As I was dialing 911, the hard dropping sound of one of the windows from downstairs shattering filled my ears. My phone was still ringing by this point. I locked my bedroom door and hid in the closet. 
When an operator answered, I whispered that some men in clown costumes had just broken into my house not even a minute ago. I was told to lock myself in a room and hide while staying on the line. A few moments passed, when, I swear, I could hear footsteps slowly making their way upstairs. I tried to stay as silent as I could, but for the life of me, I couldn't keep my breathing down. Shh. This went on for what felt like forever. Hold your breath, dude. I know it's scary, but you don't want them guys to open up your door and hear you breathing hard in the closet. When the relieving sound of police sirens could be heard outside in the street, shortly thereafter followed by quick footsteps downstairs and out the back door. After the police made their presence in the house known, I would meet them downstairs. I explained how I heard the intruders leave through the back door, and they would call for backup. Those three clowns would not be found that night. Oh, crap. Because they were wearing masks the whole time, there's a good chance they'll never be identified. I was left with a broken kitchen window, but surprisingly nothing stolen. Though I don't necessarily see this as a good thing, as it proves they weren't there to rob the place. They likely had much worse intentions. Why they targeted me specifically, though, I'm still not sure. I don't have an answer for you, dude, uh, that... Uh... They just target you so easily. Unless they uh, figured, you know, there's nobody around your house. They figured, okay, we could break into this one. But if they're not breaking in to steal stuff, then obviously they just want to get their kicks and either scaring you to death or possibly maybe murdering you. But I don't want to think that. Also, it sucks that, you know, they're wearing masks and nobody can't you know, identify and be like, those are the ones right there. I hope they do get caught one day, hopefully. This took place a while ago, when I was 14. It happened on Halloween. One of my friends and I had plans to go trick-or-treating that night. Now, I realize 14 is a bit old to still be trick-or-treating, but my friend and I figured we still had one year left in us. We lived in a really nice neighborhood, However, this meant that there's about an acre of front yard for each house, so it took about three minutes to walk between each door. But this was made up for in the amount of full-size candy bar acre of front yard for each house, so it took about three minutes to walk between each door. But this was made up for in the amount of full-size candy bars we were given. The neighborhood basically got its reputation as one filled with a ton of rich older people who would all give out full-size candy bars. Because of this, it wasn't unusual to have a lot of other people come from nearby neighborhoods to trick-or-treat. Anyway, my friend and I had been trick-or-treating for around an hour when we came across this one house. It had an old white van parked in the driveway, and the house itself was more right older there. than most of the other houses in the neighborhood. But we could tell the house had lights on inside, and even some small Halloween decorations hung up outside, so we figured the people inside of it were likely to be handing out candy. Once we got to the front door, we rang the doorbell. After a few seconds, a middle-aged man dressed in a scream costume opened the door. At first, my friend and I were both excited. Typically, if the house owner was dedicated enough to dress up in costume, we could be sure we were in for some top-tier candy. We both said trick-or-treat, and the guy handed us our candy without saying anything. I don't even remember what candy we were given, but what I do remember is what happened next. We said thank you and started walking off. But the guy told us to wait. He said he had more for us, but that we had to come inside and wait while he went to go get it. Uh -uh. It was odd, but... No, stranger danger. You should know that by now. We were 14 and figured free candy was free candy. We walked inside and were met with a full wall of Polaroid pictures of different children in Halloween costumes. The man then came around the corner with the camera and explained how he always liked to take photos of the kids every Halloween because he loved seeing their different costumes. My friend and I looked at each other, and back at the man. I said we shouldn't, and that we should get going because our moms were waiting for us in the car. This wasn't true, but I didn't feel comfortable in that situation. It was honestly really creepy. The guy didn't say anything, and just looked at us with his scream mask as we walked back outside. As we were walking down the driveway, I glanced back at the front door. The man was just standing there, still looking at us completely motionless. We tried to forget the whole situation as we continued trick-or-treating. 30 minutes in, and we had practically forgotten all about it. Yeah, he was probably mad that you turned him down. Let's see what this guy's gonna do now. 
but that's when we noticed a lone white van parked on the street in front of us. This instantly made me think back to the van in that guy's driveway just 30 minutes ago. We slowed our pace a bit, both realizing there was a chance that it was the same van. A small it might chance, be. but still. Once we walked past it, it shifted out of park and into drive, now slowly inching behind us. We tried to calm down, reasoning that it was most likely just some parents driving their kids from house to house. This was more common than you would think, as like I mentioned earlier, the houses were a good three minute walk from each other. When we got to the next house, we noticed the van parked somewhere behind us. We waited a bit, and that's when we realized there were no kids getting out of that van. It had to have been the same guy from earlier. Dude, what do we do? We were only 10 minutes away from my house at this point, so I responded saying we should make a run for it. My friend agreed, and right as we booked it, the van did the same. We were now 100% positive this guy was following us. I looked behind us, and the van was literally right there. We weren't going to outrun this thing. There was no chance if we stayed next to the road, and we both knew this. So we jumped a fence and cut through a field that ultimately led to my house's backyard. When we got there, we ran inside and locked all the doors. Good. We had lost the guy. I still occasionally think about this encounter from time to time. This is by far the most disturbing thing I have ever experienced. And it would mark the last time I would ever go trick-or-treating. Luckily for me, uh, I was trick-or-treating where my parents and other relatives were around me. And we just uh, went on down uh, where my grandpa lived, uh, up and down his roof. But yeah, there was somebody uh, tailing me after I refused to like take a picture of something creepy with him. And yeah, I'll be like running and be like, I ain't trick or treating no more because I don't want to take a chance of running into that dude again. So I don't blame you, dude. You should have called the cops on that dude, though. I mean, you could have got him arrested for uh, being a potential stalker. Hopefully, I would like to bet he got caught, hopefully. So that's going to be it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on those notifications for more Chill and Scares content like this. As always, this has been another successful storm of the Tin Man's Corner Channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tin Man Taylor. I say that's a wrap, and have a nice day, and happy Halloween to all of you. <laughs> Early, that is. <laughs>